Word up. Mic check, check, check. Special guest of the day, incomparable, rude Jude, friend to the show, friend to me. It's great to talk to you, brother. Hey there, man. You're the first person I talk to. Man, yo, I, I, I just realized that. You mentioned that earlier. I'm, you know, it's uh, I had to have been a crazy transition for you. What's life been like since leaving Shape 45? Man, um, bro, just, I've been really, I've been having, like, existential crises and shit. Like, uh, I, I, um, I don't know, man. How do I put it? It's, it's like, I, I you, you know me. I was over, I was over rap for a while. Um, but I, I didn't understand, like, until I really took a step away, the extent, to the, the extent of, like, how, how much I was done with it, you know? And, uh, uh, it, it, I don't, I don't even know if rap was good for me. You know what I mean? Like it, it like in that, I, like it, it is what it is. But when I look at, when I look at different, uh, different art forms that, that we've had throughout the years, uh, you know, I was doing some real disgusting things. <laughs> I was doing some real fucked up gross things that was like, yo, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the cool thing to do, you know? And I was doing it cause I wanted to do it, but man, I was eating ass on the first day, bro. What's wrong with that, man? That's crazy. <laughs> I was fucking, I was like, that's been savage, man. Just, just savage as fuck. I, like I took a step back, like, yo, B, like, what is this, man? Like, yo, that's, and I even look at, I even look at like black artists and shit. I was, I was talking about like George Benson and shit like that. Like this cats, they can read music, they can play music. We got a whole group of, we got a whole group of motherfuckers that can't read fucking music. They can't play an instrument. They can talk about themselves a bunch. Like, and then, and then when you're, when you're playing instruments with, with people, that means you got to be able to work with other people. You got to be able to, like, look, look at, look at, look at how we behave now, man. It's so, for better or for worse, this is where we're at. But I don't know, man. And I like it still. That's the thing. Like, I, I, I love rap, but I, I look at it like it's potato chips now instead of like a good meal. Mm. Like, I don't know if it's good for you. Man, that's a, that's an all-encompassing statement right there. Yeah, I, and, and like, here's the deal. It's like, yeah, you can find, I can, we can, I can pick out rap music that's, that's good. But I don't know if it's going to help. I don't know if it's going to, uh, I don't know if you play that good rap music, is it going to make a plant grow healthier than another kind of music? Well, no, I mean, it depends on what you describe as good music, right? I mean, rap is a sample-based genre, so I'm sure there's plenty of, you know, some of the same sonics that are coming from different, different yeah, right. you know, genres that help make a plant grow. Yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. That's And that's, that's, uh, this is these are the these are the questions that are going on in my brain right now, you know. Yeah. And, and and it's like you, we can even look at like we can look at what what is what is devolved to, like this is like my my statements aren't very far off from what it's devolved to, and you can point to yeah, there's there's some good shit here and good shit there, but like it's gotten gross, man. Yeah. Motherfuckers out here wearing dresses, shooting each other and shit. It was fucking weird, man. Okay, who did did he's everybody? Like, did he just just did he just leash on and like no one's mentioning it? Like, yo, dog, it's fucking weird, dog. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if deviance is exclusive to rap music. But I don't know if we can say that. Uh, it's not exclusive to rap music, but we're real good at it. <laughs> we're fucking we fucking we were like hold my beer rap music's like oh that's deviant oh you guys think you're deviant hold my fucking beer wow that's crazy i mean look just like look at the body count mm. I mean, rap music has a higher fucking death rate murder rate than anybody in any other music genre like that's I, i'm just saying that off the top of the head like i don't some fella got shot in a i think uh some guy that played for Pantera got shot like 17 years ago. They still talk about like only one, like one person got killed in metal. Like he got shot by a Diamond Dave or something. Dimebag Daryl got shot. Like, yo, I can tell you. I don't even know the songs. That's how much of a big deal it was. Like, oh, 
I remember they asked, uh, TMZ asked Method Man uh, if hip hop has a problem after takeoff from Migos was killed. And he says he doesn't like that question because a lot of these guys are part of, uh, because a lot of times when people die from these communities, they just blame it on hip hop or say these guys are rappers when that's not really the case. I think I think that's a that's a valid point, but you can't you, we we can't divorce ourselves from the streets, man. Like the rap, what do they talk about half the time? They talk about the streets. It's like, yo, man, you can't you can't be like you can't claim it and then don't claim it. You can't claim it, make money off of it, and then when you get shot, be like, no, nah, B, that's the streets. That ain't us. Like, bro, I can't tell because you over here, you over here repping that shit. You wearing you doing little hand signals. You wearing you're wearing the street shit and you're selling it. Like you can't have it both ways. I mean, I guess I could, but I, I to me, it's just anyway. So that's what I've been going through, just man. So I know you started your your Patreon. Yeah. Uh, what for people who haven't had a chance to check it out? You know, how have you changed your commentary? What are you focused on now? I know Shade Forty Five sort of boxed you in, as you seem to describe it now in the. It's a hip hop focused channel. It's a hip hop channel. Uh, so, what have you decided to spend most of your time on now? Right. Uh, lately, I've just been kind of like discovering different music and stuff like that. It's really tough because, as you and I both have been here, how long have we been? How long have we been doing this together? Like yeah. a, de or a decade? Yeah, close to it. It's got to be around a decade. All right. Think of I just the people. Techno technology has changed people, right? And now people have this phone right here that controls everything. Like it has an algorithm to please them. Like they they get they get with their news gets funneled in a certain way. Shit gets kept from them. Shit gets given to them. Certain things are amplified and it's based on their feedback. And these people are becoming these little demigods. Everyone's a fucking demigod. Everyone's got an opinion and shit. And it's been really interesting tr trying to produce things that doesn't bum out half of the fucking world. <laughs> it's fucking like, yo, man, I tell you, hey, man, it's a blue thing. And someone's, oh, fuck that. It's green. You know, like, oh, that's the, that dress is green. How dare you say that dress is blue? You sh like, I'm sh like, I'm people are basically paying and I'm shattering their worldview because I'm saying things that they don't agree with. Mm. And so. It's and that that's been an interesting thing for me. I, I I do want to tell the truth, but it's it's been tough because it, you got that, and then you also have the binge. People binge everything, right? So these, I feel like as as consumers, people people have got really weird, right? It's like, yo, give me that, give me. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Don't. I want more, but don't say that. I want more, but it's like it it's creating a really interesting. Uh, I didn't get to see this dynamic because I had the rec the radio station uh, as a buffer, right? And they had kicked me off of Instagram for not agreeing with the COVID shit. Okay. So, so at five at half a million people, I was done. Like I was, they kicked me off of Instagram. I, I'm not I'm not hearing or seeing nothing. And now I, I come back a few years later, and people. People who are my fans, I don't like them, man. It's just like you're you're acting gross, and I know you're not coming from like a bad place, but the technology has turned you into a fucking little demigod golem crackhead. Just like ah, and other people are really nice. So like I, so the way I've I've been doing shit is like I'm just depending on what I talk about. It uh, some days I want smoke, other days I don't. You know, you know I think. It's interesting that you describe it based from a social media perspective, because you've been this guy, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some days, yeah. you know, some days you want smoke. I've seen how you've interacted with callers. I think that's part of the charm of, of your show, of the All Out show for so long. You know I think, I mean? yeah, you got a good point, Justin. And you know what? When they kicked me off, when they kicked me off of uh, Instagram, I stayed away for a while. And I, and it's, a uh, the the beauty of the human is you one can get used to anything we can uh, we're, we we can we can acclimate to anything right so it's just like the shit that you are used to right now dealing with 
the internet is gross, but you're just used to it. I got used to it. I was like fucking, yo, I was, yo, I was like a fucking pit bull in a fight. Like I was, I was used to it, but it was, it came at a, it came with a cost, you know? Like it came with a cost to be willing to fucking argue with people all the fucking time. And now you're having an imaginary argument with a fucking, some picture of a person. Right. Your brain and they're, they're ruining your dinner, man. And I'm, I don't like that. So I'm like trying to stay away from that shit, but it's really hard. Yeah, I just, you know, I think it's, I think some, I think that's a great way to describe it, right? You can get used to anything. And you've been a public figure for 20 years plus, you know what I mean? You, this whole century you've been on TV, right? And, I mean, been on in the public airways, a public guy, right? And, you know, it also seems like audience feedback or it seems like, you know, I don't want to say varying opinions, but, you know, just the sort of the toxic nature of a fandom or maybe maybe all these fanagers run around. They really, really gets to you. Like, like that seems like you, yeah. you end up getting, you know, very, you, you I'm a lot of it. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm a sensitive soul. I'm sensitive, man. And it's, it's, it, and it's also like, um, it's like I want to be understood. So if I see somebody saying something stupid, I'm like, all right, man, let me clear this shit up. And then it, it goes down like, I go down a rabbit hole. Also, like, let's be real. This is, you're, I'm like, I'm wide open right now, bro. Like, you're not going to find me more fucking sensitive than now. I just got fucking chewed up for the last, I got chewed up for fucking damn near a decade and then fucking spit out for the last two years, man. Yo, man, this shit beat me up, dog. This shit beat me up, son. And and, and for good reason, you know, it was, there, was so, there was so much back, like, I can't even talk about it, you know? But uh, I did feel really betrayed, and it, and it beat me the fuck up. Uh, and then I'm, and it chucks you out. But to be real with you, I do feel good. Like, I feel good. I wake up every morning, I go for a little swim. I say my prayers. I'm grateful. I snorkel. I take a fish, I follow it. You know what I mean? Like, shit like that. I go to church now. And I was I was discovering God on on the way out, you know, I it, this this COVID shit really shook me to the core. Mm. When I saw people giving up like rights because they were afraid, and and I always felt like it was our government or China, somebody attacking us. And it turns out it was uh, pretty good. Like uh, when when I saw that shit go down, I was like, man, we need. They they need Jesus. They need God. And then I was like, motherfucker, you need God. Like, so I went and uh, I went and became a Christian. And I went and became a Christian. Uh, but I, yo, and did you get baptized? Nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah, not yet. You know me, I'm slow with it. I'm slow with it. But you know what? It's like I'm even even like that. This is the thing. Like, I don't, I don't go off no more or look at. Because, yeah, and I'm I don't I don't rando chicks nothing like that. Like if I'm but I'm not wearing I don't think we should I don't think there should be condoms I don't think there should be fucking welfare and I don't think there should be abortions, bro. It's like this is this what we have what what we're walking around with us is godly, man. We can make life with this and we're just spilling it. And this and that's what I mean. Like it's not just rap, it's porn, it's all this bullshit, man. And and it's it's like we're forgetting that we're that we're that we're 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 beyond animals, dog. And I was acting like an animal for twenty some years because it was logical. It made sense to act like an animal. Shit, they they told me those were the rules. So all right, let's go. And I went fucking straight orangutan for fucking twenty years, dog. What were the circumstances under you leaving Shade 45? What, what are you willing to talk about, about how that happened and, and how you felt about it? I felt, man, look, man, I knew my I knew my time was limited there because it was just, I was running out of shit to do. I was running out of shit to talk about, and I couldn't control my phone calls. I couldn't see my phone calls. I couldn't control my phone calls. So every day I was work, working blind. I just didn't know who was on my team and who wasn't, and I was mistaken about who was on my team. And when the chips fell, I was out. And that was that. And the thing was, was like, I was working on, I was working on getting, I was working on moving the team. But 
the team wasn't thinking about that. It didn't seem like it, right? So if then so do a thought experiment. If that's the case, then if the if I'm not being communicated with on this, what else is being kept from me? What else is going like is it stopped being my vision? Is it was it was a in it was a compromised vision. And I didn't realize I didn't realize to the extent. It's like what a lot of people don't understand. It's, it's like not it's it's what's said and what's not said. It's what's aired and what's not aired. Creates something, you know. Maybe I say something wild, but there's 20 people that are co-signing it, but they never get to they never get on the air. Yeah. So it just sounds like Jews saying wild shit. Wow. So you think that? Yeah, I guess it was John. I guess he was, you know, your your engineer on there. Do you think he was screening the calls, certain calls to get on there versus other calls not to? I mean, I know that's his job, but I mean, I, I never thought about it from the sense of he was thinking about callers that might put you in a, you know, more. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it was. As, I don't think it's diabolical like that, man. But I do think. I think that. Um, I think our approaches are different, and people have. Straight up, been like, yeah, I try to call in a gang of times. Like, there's been a ton of people that is so, so it's not even a think, it's a no. And, and I, and like, you know, part of, you know, uh, and like, and I can't say nothing, I can't say nothing negative about nobody. Like, it's in, it's in a deal, you know? So I'm not even like, wait, that was a contract. Was that, you say that was a contractual? Yeah, it was like, oh, bro, you can't say nothing bad about nobody. No, nobody can say nothing bad about nobody. Let's leave. And I was fine with it. I was just like, all right, bro. That's so a totally different show, though. You know what I mean? That you can't. That's like putting a major restraint on. To me, one of the most entertaining gifts that you're able to wield so effectively, and how you conduct interviews and react to stories. Like, who wants to get? Who wants uh, to? I'm in, on the way out. On the way out. When, when I when I when they let go of me. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. Oh no no! It was it's so it was okay. just, <laughs> man. So there there it is. It's like. I don't know if that's saying too much or too little or or what. And it's and it's just it was I mean, look, by the end of the thing, I'm talking about I'm talking about food because I know that I know that the cause ain't gonna get fucked with if I talk talk about food. Like people don't understand, like people like everything is everything was calculated. And it was real funny because it's like I didn't even understand sometimes when you're in it, you don't even understand you're in it, you know? Yeah. Man, I, th those last few months, I was mad as hell, bro. I was mad, bro, because I could just feel something. I didn't understand it. And I don't even think, I, I think I was living in denial because, you, like, you can't, like, if you face this fact, if I face this one fact, right. then that means my whole world is done. If I face this one fact right here, if, if, uh, if, if this, if this is true, if this miscommunication happened and this is true, it's a wrap because the principle of that affects everything. Right. So I was, a, yeah, I was, a, I was in a tough spot. I was on a call with a, a friend of mine yesterday. He was a journalist, big journalist in the space. And he was talking about how shocked he was about your viewership. He didn't realize that you had all out show was doing better than Sway's universe, for example, you know, from a viewership standpoint, it was a very popular show. That was the, that was the thing. It was like I was giving the people what they wanted. It's just not what the bosses want. Yeah. Like that. That's the thing. Like I got starved. If you if you look at if you look at if you look at what I was given to work with, I think it's fair to say that I did a lot with a little for decades. And uh, but. I never lied, and I think people appreciated that. And I always, and I think differently than a lot of cats, you know. So I think people knew that. Okay, man, this motherfucker, he's gonna say something wild. Um, at least, or what? He'll say something honest. He might be wrong, but he'll say something honest, uh, and, and thought out, you know. So I think that was my saving grace. But yeah, the show, the show, there was. There was no reason. There was no reason to, to, to get rid of to get rid of it except for my views. I'm not with. I'm not with this fucking like. 
you know, fucking like I, I started looking for God and that didn't help. I'm not with critical race theory. So those three things is just, it made it really easy to split with me. But those were the things that people liked about me. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, bro, if I was a critical race theory white person, nobody would want to hear my opinion because I would just say, what do you think, Justin? Okay, I think that too. What do you think, Justin? Well, let me defer to Justin. Okay, I think that too. That's, look, we're, 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 ain't no white people on rap, man. They, 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 they people to rap, dude. Come on, man. There's like talk, like talking. I mean, like to, the, who's talking rap now? Um, Peter Rosenberg. Uh, Still there? Uh, no jumper. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I take Vlad, it. Yeah, uh, but like who's got <laughs> those guys? Those guys. You know, they're, you know I, I feel like they're. I feel like yeah. I think white people are pretty well represented. <laughs> No, they, no, it's a bunch of fucking dick sucking white dudes, man. Those guys are like, oh yeah, what do you think? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh okay, okay. I think. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, okay, oh, okay. what should I say? Hey, I got, I rented a black guy. He's sitting next to me. Oh, okay, all right, okay. Those guys are fucking cornballs, man. <laughs> but I don't know all of them, but like, what? That's what I, what I see. A, you don't, you don't, bro. I, I, I know, I know how it feels. I know, I like I understand the the energy that you're coming from because honestly truthfully you know I think that you evolved quite a bit even in the time that I've known you right I mean let's take um a mockingbird some of the things you're talking about in your book <laughs> right like you know the there was some crazy stuff you got stories in there where you ate a ate a baby <laughs> you know? like you know you've got you've got a crazy you got a scenario with a blind chick and then here you are today you know, talking about you found Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think it's been a light switch. I think you've been moving in this direction for a while. That's why it made sense to me. Uh, yeah. You know, this, not, I don't want to say from the corporate side necessarily, but I understand where you're moving, right? Yeah, because yeah. The, the immediate question is, well, why talk about critical race theory on the show at all? I don't <laughs> talk about, no, yeah. bro, I don't talk about critical race theory, but people frame People bring critical race theory to me in the way their ideas are framed. You, does that make sense? So it's like, yo, man, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, and so it, le it puts, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, uh, I can't, you know, base, you can't be racist. I can be racist. Here's your opinion. You tell me, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, this, it puts me, at, if I go along with it, it's boring. And I don't agree with it anyway. So it's just like, it's just, yeah. <laughs> How often? Let me tell you, uh, sit down, everybody, listen to me about critical race. No, it's, I didn't bring that shit up. That shit is brought to me and put on, put in my lap. And either I can eat it or fucking spit it out. And I would spit it out every fucking time. And then that creates, a, that creates a, another riff. But is there something that you look back at that maybe, you know, you could have done differently? Or maybe there's other factors that might have played into shape? Well, yeah, I don't fucking know, dog. I don't know. Look, the, the, here's the other thing, too. Uh, I, I look at, I look at, I was looking at technology and technology has an algorithm where if you want to hear a fucking song, you don't need to go to Sirius. They, they got Pandora, they got Spotify, they got all these places you can go, Apple. So what I was looking at, I was like, what? Sep what can we do to separate ourselves? And it was just more talk. Right. And then I was like, what can I do to separ separate myself from uh, other rap shit and not talk about rap? But, but talk, about, talk about world shit from a perspective of a dude that came up the way I did. And, 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 then, bring, and then bring people who listen to rap to talk about these ideas. And it was successful. I really dug it. People enjoyed it. You know, it's like, bro, on the way out, we had, a, we had, a, we had, a, uh, you know, some of the last shows was like, we had a lady talking about dyslexia and uh, teaching kids and shit like that. And, and it had really interesting conversations. And the thing is, is I'm getting old, bro. That's the one thing, like I'm getting old. Um, that's, that was something else I was thinking about with, with uh, the company. It was just like, yo, bro. I didn't know I didn't know any t teenagers that knew about Sirius. They're on they're on TikTok, they're on Spotify, they're on all this other young stuff. 
So it's like, let me talk to the old people that are here. And yo, if you like 67, you still want to hear me talk to a porn chick, man. Sorry, bro. You're not doing that. Like, grow up. I mean, do you, you know, Howard Stern is also on the platform, right? And, you know, he's been getting a lot of criticism from, for the evolving nature of a lot of his point of views, you know, just, just pragmatically speaking, you can go to Twitter every day, you go to social media every day, and, and you look up Howard Stern, and there's a lot of backlash to where he is. Do you feel like the, the, the nature or space for a quote-unquote shock jock is, is a, has faded away or evolved to the point where you can't be shocking the way you used to be? You have to be something different. I think anything's shocking nowadays. These kids are so pussy, man. Like, they're just not built for it. The people complaining, they're not built for it. Even, even, even the boomers and Gen Xers have gotten soft. Like if I say or N, hard R, yeah. these, are, these are three words, right? But I have to say, I have to hint at one of them because it would fuck, it would break people's brains. I don't remember a time in my life where hard, hard R was working for anybody anywhere, though. Howard Stern was doing it all the time, though. Yeah, that was my he, was catching, he was catching backlash like crazy. And maybe it worked for a certain population, though. He became a, bil he became a billionaire off of that shit. That's my whole point, dog. Yeah. That's, you, you can't even, you can't even, that's, that's off the table. They're eliminating words, dog. And and I, I find, I find that problematic. You do. See, I, I would look at that as progress, right? To me, it's very easy not to disrespect people. Right, it's very it's very easy not to do that. Right, I think I look at that personally as you can't force me to not disrespect you. No, no, but right, but that just because someone gets the opportunity to disrespect somebody doesn't mean somebody has to tolerate it or watch it or pay for it. Yeah, yeah, but like, dude, but we're getting into cancellation, and yeah, and right, sure, but I also think it's evolving nature. It's also evolving nature of the times, which has always happened. Right, you, uh, but that's a point time where you can make people drink out of a different water fountain. And that's an attack on the First Amendment, though, just and that was that was where me and you always went around on that one, man. Oh. <laughs> we always went around on that. We always, we always went around. It's like you want, you want, you want, you want. I I, I want any word to go. Right. I want, I want I want any word to go because as soon as we get rid of one word, you get rid of another word, and we don't know what the next word is, and we don't know what the next thing is, and we don't know what the next dance I have to do to keep a job is, and that's an attack on, that's a t that's an attack on the First Amendment. I'm an absolutist like that, but well, see, and, and I'm an absolutist on it as well. Only difference is, I think that those were gaps in the First Amendment by letting people, you know, letting people discriminate against other people for, or or even attack people with certain dehumanizing language like to me that is actually the opposite of it it's like yeah you could do that if you want to i understand that it all comes down to interpretation but you're right we go back and forth on this all the yeah. time but how yeah. is that like you know so but in general so now with your your new that show, same spirit that same spirit got rid of me mm. like that's your spirit right there that's what got me going because i said things that people didn't like Right, but you also framed it. You, you just mentioned that how generations, like kids, don't want to hear that. You know, well, no, no, like, like so if, I, if you're I, thinking about it from a, a organizational standpoint, from a business standpoint, why, why have so much? But they lost business. Sure, but you know, so they're not letting the market dictate. They're not letting the market dictate. We're we're not seeing we're not seeing if someone says something wrong, if they lose business. We don't. We never get to. We never get to the end result. What show is in your place? Someone says, someone says something wrong, and then they're fired immediately. The market doesn't get to decide. That's somebody up top that's deciding. What what show is in your place now? What's in your slot now? I don't know, man. How do you know they lost business? Bro, they lost. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, they lost a lot. Of, they lost a lot of subscribers. They, they yeah, they took a beating. You can go look. You can go look at the numbers. They lost subscribers, man. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people stop. Just stop listening. I'd like to get some of them people that stop listening to come to the Patreon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just shout it out. But I, I mean, look, uh, that, no, that sounded thirsty as fuck. But it's it's like, yo, man, it's 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 cool. It's it's yeah, they 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 lost some shit, bro. Because fuck, man, did you did you go on serious and go check out? Did you check out after after I left? Did you look at? I'll be honest. They murdered serious people. Dropped their stuff and then murdered serious for fucking weeks. 
Right. I saw. Yeah. I definitely saw it on social though. I saw people it was all over the place for a very, 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 very long time. So, are you thinking about moving to a different platform other than Patreon? No, because this one is like this. This one is. This one protects, like protects. Uh, this one there's a paywall, so. It's like, yo, either you can come listen or you don't. And I don't have to worry about getting, I don't have to worry about getting fucking uh, advertisers or anything like that, Joe. You know, it's like, yo, bro, it's, here it is. This is what it is. You want it, you don't. That's that. It's like, there's there's no way I would be able to get an advert. I couldn't, I couldn't get advertisers back doing what I was doing before. Now I extra can't. They've been running. There's I there's I can't another. figure that shit out to save my life, man. Can't figure that out. I'm so dumb. Yo, yeah, yo, it's you were literally talking to an 80 year old man. I'm like a billion years old, bro. I'm like a zillion billion years old. I keep trying to hire people to come over. I've been having a hard time hiring people too. It goes back. I think it goes back to this. It's like I feel like these phones are creating like. And the reason why I keep pointing to it, because I don't, I'm not on this shit. And I'm watching people change. It's like people, I got, I, I, people can't even take orders no more. Or, or like, hey man, I need this, that, and that done. No, like, okay. And then they just fucking, I, I watch them go fuck off and spin off in the corner doing whatever. I'm like, yo, dude. You sound like a man outside of your time. Like you're in a whole other. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I do. I feel like a fucking old, I feel like a caveman. Do you ever, do you ever, ever have that problem, Just? Where you I haven't like, had it yet. I haven't had it yet. You know, I, do, I definitely feel like, generally speaking, I feel like where I'm at from a understanding technology standpoint to just generally my views on the world the whole time. I mean, you know, you've known me for a long time. You know, I feel like the world is moving more towards <laughs> where I've been. You know what I mean? So, you yeah, know, you're happy. from macro to a micro. I feel good. Yeah, you're like, yo, yeah, you're a uh, censorous, fucking, censorious, feeling safe <laughs> ass world. <laughs> Fucker. It's a better world than yesterday for me. For yeah. me. For me, it is. You know, yeah. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. That's good. You know, but I, I definitely think that now there are certain aspects of, you know, things that I've always enjoyed that are, are evolving, right? My issue hasn't necessarily been with what I couldn't say, but how I like to say it, or, or at least the places I like to say it. like media is rap, you know what I mean? Like you can't, yeah, part of the, every publication is laying people off. All these companies are consolidating, shutting down, closing down. I was reading some uh, stats on Gen Z. They don't read anything long at all. They'll go to the headline, then they'll go to the comments. You're right. So everyone is yeah. there the line. Like even on this channel, like I've had a lot of conflicting voices or voices with conflicting opinions. And I'm watching my audience exchange. I had Tariq Nasheed on, you know what I mean? I had, I had uh, uh, Ricky Dredd, who's a Canadian, one of the biggest Canadian hip hop voices, talking about the Drake and the Rick Ross Hells Angels thing. Audience did. And so the Tariq audience didn't like that. I've got my core audience who loves just how I embrace community yeah. in general. And then I know when I put this conversation up, then you're going to have like another audience that's, that's, that's yeah. frustrating. To me, that's actually a powerful place to be. Right, because now you do have an intersection with all these different ideas and voices, which I uh, that where you and I always meet is our willingness yeah. to have these discussions. This is the thing, though. I haven't seen anyone change their fucking mind. Like this, you and I are having a conversation, right? And then they go back to the this this said person goes back to the twenty three hours of somebody patting them on the back and co-signing their shit, whether it's my, uh, someone that agrees with me or someone that agrees with you. That, that person is, it's like, yeah, this is a cool conversation, cool story, give me a sandwich. Like, it does, no one gives a fuck. That, this, is, it's, th this is the thing I'm having a tough time with, Justin. It's like so much of this seems like it's masturbation, dog. Like, it just, it, it feels, and I think a lot of it, it carried over from, from the radio, there would just be so many times where, like when they got rid of Kanye West for said racist s statement, and I was like, "That's fucked up, man!" Like this is this is this is what that this is what getting this is what cancellation does. We just got rid of the our number one billionaire, our black billionaire, because he because people misunderstood him, and I thought people would like understand, like okay, 
the flaws in, okay, if we do this, then that could happen. And it didn't. And I was just like, oh, people are people. I'm not changing any minds. I fell into a deep depression after that one. I was like, yo, B. I remember me and you was, we was having a fucking, we was having a debate, man, at one time. He was trying to tell me Chinese people was white, but Jewish people weren't. I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, what? This, what? I uh, almost drove, we was on Gower. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a quote, but I, I remember the the conversation. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to get into that. I don't definitely don't want to. Get, I don't want to get into that. But yeah, but you're right. I, mean, I don't. I don't. I actually don't remember saying it like that, Jude. But yeah, I definitely. I definitely feel like in the in the. Uh, I definitely feel like the. I, oh, I definitely feel like the concept of whiteness evolves in America. It does. It evolves to 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 to, to uh, demonize certain groups of people, man. Like, well, I mean, that's, you know, we were talking about like your ancestors. You know, and like, and shit. like your ancestors are Italian. You know, they weren't considered white when they first got here. Right. Mama Mia. But they was from the Caucasus Mountains. You know what I mean? It was the other white people was like, these motherfuckers. Right. They like, loud as hell, man. Get these fucking loud ass motherfuckers away from us, man. Like Jewish oh, people like, talking with their hands again. Jewish people weren't considered white, you know, until then it evolved. I feel like Asian people are going to be the next step. As you see all of these, you know, as you see so many you know, uh, Mexican people and people from these other countries, Latin countries, you know, coming over from South America. I think Asia's gonna be the next up. They were the reason why affirmative action was taken away. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. God bless them. They, was, they, they keep using Asians from the railroads to affirmative action, man. <laughs> just fucking just right. people. It's crazy. It's yeah, crazy. Asian people aren't white. Jewish people are. That's it. That's yeah. it. Italians are. Like there's there's different levels of white. Like we don't want that white motherfucker next to us. But like, what the, I want this waspy one. Hey man, I appreciate you. I, I I hate to do this, but I got my guy waiting downstairs, and I'm paying him. An extra fifteen minutes. I do appreciate you, man. I'm glad we got a chance to catch up. Uh, Justin, yo, you're my man, dog, and I'm I'm bro. and you've always held me down throughout all the years, yeah. man. So thank you very much, brother. Yeah, much love to you, man, for real. Thanks for reaching out, and I know you've been keeping. Justin's been like hitting me up uh, as I've been going through a thing. And um, it's, yo, even though you believe in what was ultimately my downfall, I still, <laughs> I still love you. Now I'll play with you. <laughs>